Hey team, how's it going? Welcome to another video and today we are talking about three cheap accessories that you can get to really improve the quality of your videos. This video ties into another one that we created which talks about three simple camera settings you can change to vastly improve the quality of the look of your video and also the sound of your video. So if you haven't seen that already, go check it out, link just over here. I did do a previous draft of this video on the same day, but I was shattered. It came across really terrible. Oh, I was so exhausted. It looks really bad. So I decided to refilm it with a bit more energy. I now know why most YouTubers start their video with them making coffee. So let's kick right into it. The first cheap accessory that you should look to get ties into the other video because we talked about white balance and making sure that you have a consistent white balance and an accurate white balance depending on the situation that you're in. And especially when you're using a multicam setup like we are right now. Multicam. When using a multicam setup, it's really important that you have consistency across the two cameras. So have two of the same cameras, have them set to the same settings, but especially make sure, even if they're different cameras, even if the settings are different, make sure the white balance is the same. This will make sure that you have a consistent look and feel across the two different cameras and give it that professional feel. Now, you know why it's important. Let's talk about some accessories that you can get to improve the look. So a cheap accessory that you can get to help you set the white balance in any camera is the gray card. The way to use a gray card is to take a photo of it and then in your camera's custom white balance setting, it'll give you the option to select a photo to set the white balance. You go and find that photo of the white card that you took or the gray card and then set that as your white balance and it'll give you the perfect white balance. What's important is that you place it near your subject so that it has the same light as they do because if you place it over here or over here it might have a completely different white balance so make sure it's next to your subject this one's a little bit small this is one that we use for product photography so a bit too small for the job when you're dealing with a human subject so what you can get is also a larger gray card or white card. So what you can do is place that next to your subject or in front of your subject and that will have the correct white balance. Now if you're doing video, video cameras tend to work with an automatic white balance setting. So you actually target the white section and then press the auto white balance button then it sets it. With a photography camera, it's or stills camera, it tends to be grey. Works best with grey. So there you go. It's not the cheapest option. This one Luckily, there is another solution that you can use. Woo. And that other solution is just simply a piece of white paper. You can easily put this into your camera bag or find it wherever your shoot is. Just find a white wall, find a white piece of paper and use that. Plus, it can always work as an ex a, a reflector. Make people look even more pretty. And it's free. The second cheap accessory is to do with audio. And just like having manually set audio levels, it's really important to have an external microphone. The reason for that is if you are using a camera such as this, this is a Canon 250D, it has a fantastic video image, it takes great photographs, but the internal microphones aren't great. The uh, internal preamp isn't ideal either but the microphones tend to be very cheap and it captures sound from all around instead of where your subject is. Now in this scenario I need the camera to be picking up sound from me and not the room. So I mean I've got a lapel mic which makes things a lot easier but if you want to make sure that you are directing the microphones towards your subject you want to look at getting an external shotgun mic such as this. Now this one is a small cheap one it is one by Rode and it slots just into the hot shoe on the camera and then it plugs in on the side. I like Rode stuff. They're made in Australia. Good day, Bruce. Oh, hello, Bruce. How are you, Bruce? So I jumped out of bed and all I had was me undies on. They're pretty rugged and they tend to come with a lot of accessories uh, for free, which is nice. And this one includes a windshield, which is essential if you're filming outside, especially if it's a windy day, or if the person speaking talks a lot like that, it removes plosives. You can also get 
ones from other manufacturers. You can get even cheaper ones than this. I'm going to put the price of this one over here or here, one of the sides. So you can see roughly how much the price is. I think Deity also make a similar version of this. This allows you to direct the microphone at your subject and block out a bit of external noise. Now, the longer the shotgun barrel is, the more effective it is at isolating the subject. But, you know, it all comes down to what is your budget, how much you're going to be using it, and how far away you are from your subject, how noisy the environment, lots of different factors. Again, talk to somebody down at your local camera shop about which one would be best for you. In the previous version of this video that I tried to make but was too tired and came across being terrible, I did do a quick test using the 250D and this microphone to demonstrate the difference between the internal mic and the external mic, so check that out now. So I've set the white balance on this camera, I've also set the audio levels manually so you can get an idea about what this camera's microphone sounds like. Now let's put this microphone on there and see the difference. Okay, how is it sounding now? Is it sounding better? Does it sound worse? Is this cheap accessory worth the money? Well, you can let me know uh, in the comments. Say which do you think is better? The one without? So I've set the white balance on this camera. I've also set the audio levels. Or this one with the external microphone. Has this been good advice? Or was it a waste of everybody's time? I asked the question, but I definitely can tell a difference. The internal microphone sounds a bit more tinny, and this one sounds a bit fuller. It's not a gigantic difference, but it will especially make a difference when you are placing the microphone directed at a subject. So definitely better quality, but more importantly, it directs the... It's more directional. That's a better way to say that. The third and final cheap accessory that you can get to really help improve the quality of your videos is the humble tripod. Now this is one of my favorite tripods. It is a tiny little Manfrotto and it does the job, especially for travel stuff. So you can always place it on top of other things and you can also use it as a handle for your vlogging. It's pretty handy. Now you probably want to start off with a larger tripod and you can get some pretty cheap ones and some reasonable ones. There's so many out there, but Stabilizing your footage makes a huge difference. Unless you're making a J.J. Abrams film, in which case, shake your camera as much as you like. But most clients will like a nice stable image. It's less distracting for your viewer. Unless you want a more run and gun feel, like some documentaries, or you use a gimbal, a nice stable tripod makes a huge difference to the quality of your video. Don't rely too much on in-body image stabilization. It doesn't always work very well. It can even ruin footage by introducing this kind of weird wobble down the sides if you're using a really wide angle lens. A tripod is a nice staple. It's very versatile, and I'd really recommend that as being one of the first accessories that you buy. And again, go down to your local camera shop and have this discussion with the people down there because they will know what is a good tripod within your budget that suits your needs. There's so many different types out there, so many different brands, it tends to be quite overwhelming. So go and have that chat, and uh, I will put the tripods that I use in the description below so that you can see the various different ones that we have ourselves. So those are the three cheap accessories that I think you should get first, because for the price and for the size, they make a huge difference to the quality of your videos. But you might disagree, and if you do, put it in the comments. If you agree, put it in the comments. And if you think I've left something off this list, then also let me know. Check out some of our other content. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel and I shall see you in the next video. Take it easy.